Okay, so today we talked about dichotomous keys and how to use them. And we're also doing an activity and for the worksheet where you will be making a dichotomous key as well. So today we'll also be taking the attendance quiz at the end of the presentation. And I was having technical issues with this. So if you um, don't see the question in the attendance quiz, please just email it to me, which you can do in Canvas or via your regular UCR email. So what is a dichotomous key? A dichotomous key is something that we use to help us identify organisms that we find typically in the field. However, they can also be used to identify things that you might have in an, a museum that has been collected and preserved as well. So this is not a dichotomous key over here on the right, but it is the basically the basics um, of how a dichotomous key works. So you start out with some type of feature. So here we have the wings and we're being asked essentially, does the organism you're looking at have wings? Yes or no? And then you go down. If it does, for example, you go down here and then you're asked another question about some type of trait of the organism you're looking at. Like if you, if you um, say that it has spots, then it's this made up <laughs> organism here. Uh, or if it didn't have wings and then you have to look at its feet, you go to does it have toes or hooves? You have to decide what trait it is and then you're able to get to the organism that you are trying to identify just by using these traits on this dichotomous, on this flow chart, which is not a dichotomous key. Um, the flow, this flow chart is a little bit easier to navigate than a dichotomous key, but just so that you can get the concept of how it works, I'm using this to show you. And unfortunately, insects can be very complicated. As you know, there are so many kinds of insects, way more than you thought probably before taking this class. And so it's very almost rare, I would say, that you are able to get down to a species level unless you're some type of expert in that field. So I struggle with identifying lots of insects down to species, and I'm usually pretty happy if I can get to the genus or um, the family level. Okay, so when you're outside or something and you see a bug, um, we talked a little bit already about what a dichotomous key is, but if you have that in the field, for example, and you see something and you have no idea what it is, you can use it to help you identify it. So this bug, if you saw it out in the field, you might be like, wow, I've never seen that before, but this is actually the larval form of a very common insect and one that is very beloved um, by a lot of people. So if you didn't know, this is the larvae of a ladybug or a lady beetle as um, entomologists will like to call it because it's actually a beetle and not a true bug. And so it can also help you to determine what to do in certain situations if you can correctly identify the organism you're looking at, right? So if you see these bugs in your garden, you might not know what they are or what to do about it. It, or any or do anything if it's a problem or not, right? So uh, if you recognize any of these, you can maybe think about what, if they are gonna cause an issue in the garden or if they're helpful, or if maybe they just, it doesn't matter if they're there. Uh, or maybe if you just see a couple, it really doesn't matter. They're not gonna do a lot of damage, for example, if they're herbivores. But this one down here, we see a lot of them. So that might be concerning. And this is a type of aphid down here. So we know that aphids are uh, insects that will pee, uh, get into the plant and suck out the juices, right? And that's not good. And for most, uh, if you see that on a garden plant, for example, you don't really want that in your garden. So you might see something like this. And of course, this looks like a praying mantis, even though it's not the color you might typically see. It's a little bit more camouflaged. And you might not know either what, what to do about this. But this is actually often considered a beneficial bug in the garden because it will eat, eat other insects that are going to prey on your garden plants, so the herbivores. Um, and then the top right here is a predator bug called an ambush bug. Um, but this is a predator of pollinators. 
So when you see that, or if you see a lot of those in your garden, you might start to get concerned that it's going to eat pollinators that are gonna help your plants produce fruit. So just to, just to show you a couple of ways that using a dichotomous key and being able to identify some of these insects can be helpful. And then the same thing about whether or not you see an insect in your house on the wall, what would you do if you saw any of these insects on your wall, for example? Um, so the reason I put this up here is because this top left is a large cockroach, um, often called palmetto bugs. And we consider uh, cockroaches to be pests in our house, right? However, the larger ones are a little bit easier to manage than the German cockroaches, which are smaller um, and can get into a lot of tight spaces. However, you probably don't want either one of these guys in your house. But there are also some cockroaches that look a lot like this um, that actually live outside. So you might see it like outside your house on the sidewalk in and be concerned that it's inside your house when actually it's just one that might be living in like a wood pile or something near your house and you just need to relocate that or get rid of it. Um, and then a lot of people actually will misidentify like some of these types of bugs over here for cockroaches and might go all out and buy you know, raid or something and start spraying their house when they actually don't need to, right? Maybe one of these guys just got in from outside. So we're going to go over how to use a dichotomous key with this uh, easy example. So this is what a dichotomous key looks like instead of that flow chart that I showed on slide one. And so you have some trait and then you have to decide which one it has and then it will tell you to go to a specific number. So for example, this first um, insect down here, we're gonna look at and try to identify. So I'm looking at the rest of these bugs and I'm gonna try to answer this question. Does it have small wings or does it have large wings? So compared to the last two, I'm gonna say that it has large wings. So I'm gonna go to number three. And then I'm going to read this. Does it have a double pair of wings or a single pair of wings? So one pair or two pairs of wings. And so I'm actually seeing one, two pairs of wings. So I'm going to go to number four. Does it have spots or does it not have spots? It does not have spots. So we know that this is species D. And then if we go to the next one that needs to be identified, I'm going to say that it now has, change colors here, that this one here has small wings. So I'm gonna to go to number two. Does it have a single or a double pair of wings? It has a double pair of wings. So this, I'm figuring out a little bit early on, is species B. And now this next one, I'm going to also say it has small wings. And so I'm going to two, does it have a double pair of wings or does it have a single pair of wings? It just has one pair of wings. So this is species A. And then we can go in to fill in. Oh, it looks like I missed one, sorry. So this one here, what, where does this go? This is large wings. So we're going down to number three and it has a single pair of wings. So this is going to be species C. And then we're gonna to try to fill in the part for number five. So we are looking at these two and I'm gonna to try to find the difference between species E and species F. So they both have spots and they both have a double pair of wings but one has dark wings. So species E has are clear wings, not light. <laughs> and the species F has black wings.
All right, so that is the basics of how you're going to use the dichotomous keys. And then I also went over the worksheet really quickly. In class, so let me pull that up. Okay, so the worksheet for today includes a couple of multiple choice questions worth half a point. And then this question uh, three, which you're going to use this dichotomous key for arachnids to identify the arachnids in these pictures. Um, and it's, I don't have the page fully open, so it looks a little cut off, but once you look at it on a full browser, you should be fine. And I would recommend opening this in a separate tab. And this is just a dichotomous key, like the one we were just working with, and you can use it to help you out with um, identifying each of these. And I'll also go over the basic anatomy of arachnids again, discussing their cephalothorax uh, and their abdomen and what their pedipalps are. So you're gonna be using those features to help you identify the uh, traits within these different arachnids in the dichotomous key. And then this is matching. So you will go down here and select the correct one. And then for question four, you're going to upload a file uh, making your own dichotomous key to help you identify these different organisms. So you can do that by taking a picture and uploading it or scanning it and uploading it, or perhaps you can draw one on your computer or tablet and save it as a PDF or a photo and upload it. You, if you have issues with that, you can also email me the document of this last question that you complete. And of course, if you have any questions, just email me and um, we can hopefully get anything sorted out. Um, and if you had, a lot of people had technical issues this morning, so I'm extending the worksheet due date until 11.59 on Friday instead of Thursday for this to be turned in. So if you have any questions, please let me or Sally know and we will be able to help you out. Okay, and one last thing I just wanted to go over is there were some questions about the arachnid dichotomous key. Um, the cephalothorax and the abdomen um, can be segmented or non-segmented. So what that means is that when you're looking at this um, photo that I just had up that is now gone, <laughs> that you want to see like, for example, if the question asks about an abdomen, abdomen being segmented, the abdomen of this one species L is segmented. So you can see that it has all these little sections here and the abdomen of K is not segmented, right? Cause it just looks like one whole piece. Um, so that was just a common question I had in the first section. So hopefully that helps out. And if you have any other questions, please, like I said, email me or Sally. And um, yeah, I will hopefully see you guys next week. We'll be getting an announcement from Dr. Rankin about what uh, returning to campus will look like for this class.